Wagner. Mm. Smell his finger. Ah, smell it. Smell his finger. Good. Celebrities, don't you love them? Doing adverts, appearing on reality TV, and above all, talking about stuff they know little about. I'm Lee Kern, and for a combination of pranking them, booking them for fake TV shows, and getting them to engage in random acts of lunacy, I'm gonna see just how mental things can go when fame-hungry celebs are invited to tackle the hot topics of the day. Welcome to Celebrity Bedlam. So that's basically the gist of the show. We have a bit of a giggle playing pranks on celebs. Look at me, I'm Puggles. I'm having fun. <laughs> this week, we're going to see what we can learn from celebs by inviting them to engage in the topic of travel and adventure. We're going to see a bit of this. Really? Okay, hi. hi. Sorry, 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 sorry. A bit of this. Hello and welcome to the side pool. And a bit of this. I'm the only blind racing driver in the world. Um, with the only living one. But first, Boy band member Andy Scott Lee has been invited onto a fake TV show to deliver facts about the Titanic. They've actually found the iceberg that the Titanic hit. The Titanic struck the iceberg here in the North Atlantic, just south of Greenland. Yeah. And the iceberg has basically been found here, just yeah, near right. the tip of India, near Sri Lanka. I'm absolutely baffled. <laughs> I'm absolutely baffled by that. Mm. Last yeah. one, mate. Do and it. It's the weekend. Yeah. Hi, I'm Andy Scott Lee from 3SL. For years, boffins have tried to track the actual iceberg that hit the Titanic. Originally, the Titanic hit the iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean. It travelled through the Mediterranean Sea and then through the Suez Canal, down through the Red Sea, and it ended up just off Sri Lanka, south of India. What an incredible journey and an end to a timeless tale. I think they're actually going to destroy the iceberg, iceberg just Probably. what's left of it. Yeah, they're going to destroy it as a sort of um, yeah. closure, closure for those people involved. So who's actually doing that? Um, uh, Royal Navy SEALs. They're going right. out there on a frigate. The Royal Navy SEALs are on their way in a frigate and they're actually going to destroy the iceberg. Hopefully this will give some closure to those loved ones lost in this awful tragedy. Party. Disasters like the Titanic could put one off the idea of travel altogether. But marvels and wonders are still out there for those who have the courage to explore. I thought I'd bring some of those wonders to our own shores. Supposing as an anthropologist who'd invited a film crew into his world, I set myself the task of convincing some celebs, Wagner from X Factor and Mark Reed from early 2000s pop band A1, that they were meeting a rare and exotic tribe, evacuated from their homeland and now living in the children's zoo in Chesham. We've been working closely with a tribe called the Sequonda tribe. Here are the Sequonda. They're all actors. Sequonda. 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 Ah. Yeah. Their land, their habitat, has been endangered for a number of years now because of rising sea levels. They're from northwest London. One of them's from Chiswick. So the very difficult decision was made to go there to make contact with the tribe and to actually evacuate them. At the moment, they're just living here in the zoo. Don't we have a, a warmer place to go with them? What are we going to do, put them in a hotel? That's not what they're used to. Well, let's meet them. I'm going to call out to them in, in, the, in the manner that they're accustomed to. Whoop! Whoop! Whoa! Amazing. Just be careful. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. This stuff hasn't been seen for hundreds of years. Oh, God. I've got that from the Petten Zoo. That's Tony. We've been looking for him. Tony. He doesn't seem too pleased. Yeah. 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 He's just trying to rub yeah. it. Yep. Our celebs then learnt some of the Sequondas' unusual customs. Wagner. Mm. Smell his finger. Ah, smell it. Smell his finger. 
smell his finger. It's a, a greeting. What, it's it's a sign like? of submission. Okay. Come on, smell it. But just smell his finger. There you Don't go. Worry. Smell it properly. Right. OK. Do you do the greeting as you did before? Oh, right. What, everybody? Yes, because, you know... Do you want to smell everybody's some, finger? You, you respect for all of them. I don't, I don't know where their fingers have been. Okay, hi. Sorry, 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 sorry. No! Bad! Meanwhile, Wagner was going to fucking town. Good. Scabies! With formalities out of the way, it was time for Wagner to share a little about himself. I became well known to the British people because I went to a show called X Factor where I sang. Next, I met up with Blue Peter presenter Zoe Salmon, who believes she was delivering Captain Scott facts on plasma screens placed around the South Pole. 2012 is the centenary of Captain Scott's expedition to the South Pole, and we're doing something called the Plasma Project, and we're going to have celebrities on plasma screens littered around the South Pole, broadcasting information and facts to anyone who happens to be walking past so that people can learn what happened there. OK, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, no problem. Hi, this is Zoe Salmon, TV presenter. Around this spot in 1912, the first mechanical robot was used in the South Pole. Named Tony, he was a source of comfort, keeping morale up, telling jokes and playing cards with Captain Scott and his men. He joined the team on their failed attempt to beat the Norwegians to the South Pole. He can be seen in the now famous photograph of Scott et al. posing with the Union Jack flag. The experience, though, was crushing, and the team now had to make their way back in defeat. Despite the best efforts of Tony to keep up morale on the return journey, Captain Scott and his men, weary and tired, died. When the expedition found Scott and his men the following year, Tony was frozen in position watching over them. Oh, that's just, like, so lovely, isn't it? Mm. Must have been a nice sort of... Oh. And they were really close. Yeah. Back at the children's zoo, our celebs were still learning about the sequonda. And they sing, they've got beautiful voices. Oh, right. Really? Yeah, it really comes alive. <laughs> hey, what do you think? Sounds great. Yeah. I mean... It's their culture. I mean, it's different kind of singing, isn't it? Really. It's strange. It's not. It doesn't really seem like music, does it? It's got some melody to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of waiting for the key change. After the Sequandra had finished their song, it turned into karaoke hour as Mark responded. Take on me, Keep going. take on me, take me on, I'll be gone in the yard too. Keep going, this is amazing. Talking away, I don't know why I'm to say, I say it anyway. Today's another day to find you. Yeah. You're shying away. Yeah. I'll be coming yeah. for you anyway. How lucky the Sequonda were to be evacuated from their ancestral home, be locked in a zoo, and have this impromptu gig from Mark from A1. Next, I met up with Carrie Ann Barrow, winner of Gavin Henson's The Bachelor. 
I was meeting her as the world's only blind racing driver to show that the spirit of adventure was still alive and that I'd be able to negotiate my way around an obstacle course. Karen. Hi, Lee. Hi, Karen. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Sorry to bring you out into the cold. That's but, um, all right. You're going to take me for a drive? Yeah, we're going to have a little drive around the course. Oh. Um, it's nice to meet you. So you were on the show with the, the Gavin Hanson. Yeah. I know. What's he like in real life? Yeah, he's a nice guy. Fantastic. Well, my name is Lee. I've grown up with impaired vision. When you don't have a certain sense, um, your other sense isn't more keen. And so as a blind person, you develop my spatial awareness of the space that I'm in. And so obviously before you got here, I've had a walk around and planted in my mind where everything is. Good for you, eh? It's great. I mean, I'm the only blind racing driver um, in the world, um, but the only living one. Go for a nice drive? Yeah. Come on, then. So you ready to go for a spin? Let's do it. Let's do this. <laughs> Let me concentrate, please. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> Growing up, like I was told to always believe in yourself. And you know, even if you've knocked a few things over here and there. I've done pretty well. Yeah, you've done a brilliant job, to be fair. How many points have you got on your licence? Three. Naughty, three. naughty. I know. It's made my insurance go up to £4,000 a year. Four grand a year for insurance? I can't get insured at all. <laughs> I'm not so far. I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry, did I upset you with that? What do you think of your driving today? I hope that I've shown to you that, you know, you have to believe in your dreams and don't let anyone tell you that there's nothing you can't do. But what happens when you hit lots of things? Surely your dream is not to hit anything. In an ideal world, yeah. In an ideal world, I wouldn't be blind, would I? I'm the only blind racing driver in the world, but the only living one. Hey, you do know you're just hitting lots of cones. I'm not hitting cones. I'm living my life. Shall we go and park back at the yeah. um, start? You know where to park. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly where we are. Let's just okay. park up here on the cones. Okay, well, we're just on the bus at the moment. Do you want to park on the bus? It's, I'm not on the grass. I'm parking up where we started. There we go. Back safe and sound where we started. Yeah. You did hit a few things, though, you know. My philosophy is follow your dreams, you know, become the best you can be. You. And I hope as you journey through life, you and Gavin Henson from The Bachelor have a successful voyage through the choppy seas of love. Mm, maybe. Coming up in part two. Mark Reed becomes king of the Saquanda. He's, he's clearing the dirt away from you. Wagner gets some action. I think he's inviting you to, to lie with his wife. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy. Your wife is very beautiful. And we'll see Andy Scott Lee on a plasma screen somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Hi, I'm Andy Scott Lee, and I'm from 3SL, and here I am. I'm part of the floating Titanic memorial. See you then. Welcome back to Lee Kern's Celebrity Bedlam, the show where we explore the hot topics of the day by playing pranks on fame-hungry celebs and getting to take part in fake TV shows. This week, looking at travel and adventure, we've seen the world's only blind racing driver. We've heard about Captain Scott and his robot. Named Tony, he was a source of comfort, keeping morale up, telling jokes and playing cards with Captain Scott and his men. And we've had celebs believing they're visiting a rare tribe, currently living in a children's zoo in Chesham. Good. We'll return there in a minute, but first... Here's Andy Scott Lee from the boy band Free SL, who believes he's going to be part of a floating Titanic memorial in the North Atlantic Ocean. 
and we've organised that there's actually going to be a floating memorial to the Titanic, actually around the spot where it hit the iceberg and sunk, where oh. there will be plasma screens broadcasting celebrities talking yeah. about what happened that day so that anyone passing learns about it. Hi, I'm Andy Scott Lee and I'm from 3SL and I'm part of the Titanic floating memorial. Andy, Andy. Try not to smile so much because obviously a lot of people lost okay. their lives, you know, yeah. during that That's accident. And point. so it'd be good to, you know, be a bit serious, yeah. but but loud. Hi, I'm Andy Scott Lee and I'm from 3SL and here I am, I'm part of the floating Titanic memorial. Around this spot back in 1912, approximately 11.40 p.m., the HMS Titanic hit an iceberg. Over 1,000 souls lost their lives that evening. Please pass this spot quietly as a mark of respect. Meanwhile, back in the children's zoo... Wagner, look. Yeah. Look, he's taking a little drink. They're like little gerbils. Ah! They're like little gerbil ah. men. Mmm. Ah. Ah. Mm. Okay. That's, what's that he's got there? It's just something they found. It's just a plastic bottle. It's a plastic bottle to us, but to them, it's an object of wonder. <laughs> it's, it's right. almost like they're anointing you. I don't know what's going on here, but this is incredible. Oh, really? What a privilege. What a privilege. <laughs> They're honouring you. They see you honoured. What? This is incredible. <laughs> what a privilege. An honour is like, clearing the dirt away from you. see them telling stories, and okay. they've bestowed upon you the honour of storytelling. I'm Mark, and um, I'm from a band, a musical band, uh, called A1. And uh, we've been around now for like 10 years, many years. Uh, we've travelled all around the world. Um, and um, we've been to many places. Um, you've been in a plane? You've been in an, an aeroplane. You've flown to get here. Oh, then they're, they're really not that interested in my story. I think I'm losing them. Um, yes. Um, thank you for um, this gift. Um, I appreciate it very, very much. Oh, I've lost him as well. Um, do you want some more nuts? Um, uh, you like music? You like to sing? You like taking me? I actually, he was singing. He I was think singing we should stop well. it there. I think we should stop it. Lost him. Yeah. He likes you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. You're all right. I don't know. All right, gerbil boy. <laughs> Go on, fuck off. As the case study of the Sequonda shows, there is still much left to discover in this world. But the real frontier in this universe remains space what glories and wonders must lie out there. I thought I'd let some members of the public find out by organising a focus group in which they could meet a man who'd been there. You guys are actually quite lucky and have actually got someone who's actually been into space, so you can ask any questions. Yeah. Hello. My name is Kim Noble. I've travelled through space. I've had over 200 things inserted into my anus. In March 2003, I was walking through a field in Luton as a shortcut back home from the pub when a strange light suddenly shone on me and I felt myself being lifted up. Before I knew it, I was in a strange place with lights being shone in my face. I knew I was in an alien spacecraft. That was the first time I had something inserted into my anus. They said it was part of a test. At the time, I was scared but I remained calm and I didn't move as I didn't want to hurt myself. They only struck one thing in my anus that time. Then they returned me back to Earth, back to the field in Luton, and I returned home. 
Two weeks later, I was abducted in the same way. They asked me to tell them about life on Earth, and I did so. Then they inserted something into my anus. It took over half an hour. Then they asked me more questions about literature. I answered all their questions very patiently, and then they inserted something into my anus. After they had struck something into my anus for the fifth time, they returned me to Earth, and I forgot all about it, and I just got on with my work. Since that time, I've been abducted a further 30 times by aliens, and I've had over 200 things inserted into my anus. And now I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about my experience. When you were abducted, was it from the same place? Yeah, in Luton, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Is this always the same place that you're abducted from, Luton? Yes, yeah. It's always around the Luton area? Mm. So that whoever they are, they're just concerned with the Luton area? Yes, yeah. Back in the children's zoo, a special honour was about to be bestowed on Wagner. Your, your, your wife? But yeah? Not. Uh, Wagner, I think he's inviting you to, to lie with his wife. Ah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy. Your wife is very beautiful. I think he's just going now to get his wife. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's the mother, isn't it? No, that's his wife. Is that his wife? Yeah. Who was the other girl? I think she's just one of the girls. What am I doing? How comfortable do you feel with this? Well... Meanwhile, in the North Atlantic... What a day for adventure it had been. We'd seen a blind racing driver and met a man who'd been into space. Then they inserted something into my anus. We'd also seen celebs making friends with an exotic tribe who lived in a children's zoo. But sadly, it was time for them to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Seconda. Seconda. Seconda, thank you. Seconda. I'll never forget you. So what have we learned about travel and adventure? I don't really know. Of course there's danger out there, but there's a big world of wonder past your front door too. Why don't you head out there? You never know what you'll find. Hold on, that's, that's a sort of open. Yeah. Hey, get back! Get back! Back! Get back, you bloody animals! <laughs> 